All right, um, over the last uh, uh, four weeks, um, and today is the fifth week, and it'll be the end of this series. Uh, for some, that might be saddening. For others, that might be joyful occasion. Um, but we've been talking about, for the last few weeks, uh, the subject of entrusted, um, the subject of entrusted. And, and really what we've been focusing on is how do we make our lives count um, and, and, and in doing that understanding uh, that, that, that Jesus has entrusted us with everything, say everything, everything, in our lives to use wisely for him. That everything, including our lives themselves, has been entrusted, has been, has been given to us to steward, to be faithful in how we use uh, it and them um, to, to be used wisely, not just for us, but for him. Um, just to recap uh, the first uh, few weeks, in week one, um, we really established the idea that everything in my life is not mine, it's all his. Uh, that entrustment is a privilege, that is, we sometimes take for granted our lives and everything in it, and, and sometimes we have the mentality, uh, an entitlement mentality, thinking that it belongs to me, that I deserve it, but it was a gift to us from God. So, so everything belongs to Jesus, not mine, all his. And in week two, um, we looked at uh, the subject of quality over quantity. Um, we looked at the proportion of entrustment. In other words, what we, we, we summarize there is that Jesus gives me what I need and what I can handle. And, and sometimes I know that's hard because we think that we can handle more. Amen. Um, but, 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 but if we look at it, he gives us according as the, as the story went in Matthew 25. He gave each servant according to their ability to handle. We should praise God that we serve a God that knows what we can handle. Amen. Um, so he blesses us with our needs and what we can handle. It's not about quantity. Uh, it's about quality. We three, um, we looked at uh, the subject, make it count. We looked at the purpose. Why have we been entrusted? And what we learned in that is that we've been entrusted with everything in our lives because what we have should be used to benefit the kingdom and bless other people. That what we have is not just about benefiting us, amen, it's to benefit the kingdom and ultimately to bless others. And then on last week, um, we began by, by closing this out uh, with the subject on how we can live this out. Uh, how can we practice uh, uh, this, this entrustment, this idea of entrustment? And so what we did was we looked at some core elements. We looked at three, and then we, we talked about some practical ways of living it out. So last week we looked at we've been entrusted with the relationships in our lives. And we talked about the fact that we've got to let our relationships honor Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, we, last week we talked about we've been entrusted with our time, right? That time is a gift from God. And, and we talked about that we have to make the most out of the time that we've been given. And then last but not least, we, we talked about that we've been entrusted with our money and our possessions. Uh-oh, there it is. Amen. Right? And we talked about how that, one, we have to do what is required. Uh, and that requirement is to bring the tithe to the storehouse. And then beyond that, we have to learn how to live generously. Because it's out of that generosity that, that we begin to see um, the scripture in Luke that talks about giving. It shall be given back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and overflowing in your life. Anybody want overflow? Amen. Uh, you tired of just enough? Amen, right? We, we all want overflow. And so today, um, we're closing that out, same subject, living it out. And we want to look at one, the last uh, practical area of, of entrustment, and that is the area of our talents and our abilities. Our talents and our abilities. I want to just start with this scripture. This really kind of helps level set, 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. Um, it reads, don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not, what? Belong to yourself. Verse 20 says, for God brought you with a high price, 
So you must honor God with your body. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for this time. And God, we just pray that you would open up our ears to hear, our minds to understand, and our hearts to receive your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. I talked about last week, we all heard the same, practice make perfect, right? And, 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 and as you begin, like I did on yesterday, some of you to, to watch the, the start of another college football season, it did not feel like that my particular team practice made perfect, amen? <laughs> amen. It, feel, it felt like that, that what have y'all been doing over the last uh, few months, right? And so we understand this notion of practice makes perfect, that, 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 that we have to invest time and, and we have to be repetitious in what we're doing in order to make it not just a habit but a lifestyle, right? And so as we look at this last core area that God has entrusted us with, our talents and our abilities, we have to understand that Jesus has given us talents and abilities, things that were given either only to us or things that we have learned to do along the way. And many of us use those talents and abilities in a lot of different ways. Many of us use them to make a living, amen? We use them on our jobs. We use them in our homes. We use them in our communities. We use them uh, in, in, in our own personal time, things that, that only we know how to do that God has blessed us with. But friends, here's the, the thing that I want us to walk away with today, and that is that Jesus Christ gave us our talents and abilities to serve other people. Really, the big part of, uh, of, of really, if we think about the whole notion of entrustment, that every aspect of our life really comes together and culminates at this notion that we have been placed here to be servants of God, to serve God by serving others. Amen? Amen. That, that in essence... Uh, if we can, we can merge our relationships, how, we, how, how can we have Jesus honoring relationships is in how we serve those that we're in relationship with. We, we, can, we can effectively make the best of our time when we dedicate time, not just always to ourselves, but we learn to craft out and dedicate time to serving others. That when we look at our money and our resources and our possessions, right, that it's good to have a nice fat bank account. Amen, somebody, right? But that, 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 that it's just not enough to have it for myself that Jesus has blessed me with the means that I have, not just to bless me, but to bless me so that I can bless others and serve them. And so, and so. So as we look at our, our talents and our abilities, it, it, it brings it all together that first and foremost, we are here in this life to make a difference. Say make a difference. That's really my first point, that we are here to make a difference. We are here to make a difference. And friends, our talents and our abilities are not just for us to make a living with. Let me say that again, that, that our talents and our abilities are not just here to make a living, but they are here to make a difference in the kingdom of God and in the lives of those around us. Scripture says, 1 Peter 4 and 10 says it like this. It says, it, let's read it together. It says, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve others. He said that God has given us gifts. Now, now we're not going to get too deep in what gifts are, but spiritual gifts are, are things that God has entrusted to us, abilities uh, that, that, that he has given us to use for the kingdom of God. And, 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 and I know that when we talk about spiritual gifts, and we'll talk about this a, a little bit more later, it gets kind of weird because most people don't know what their spiritual gift is. Most of anybody's like, I don't know what my spiritual gifts are, right? Don't worry, we got something for you today, amen. But, but, but he has given us those things, what? So that we use them well to serve one another. And friends, really this idea goes back to what we've talked about for a long time and most of this year going back into last year. 
that we ought to make a difference by embracing the call of God to be full-time ministers representing Jesus and serving other people where we live, where we work, and where we worship. That in essence, as we go out into the world, as we intersect people, because all the time we talk about serving people, when we talk about serving in church, we oftentimes just think about serving one another, right? Come on, we can be honest, right? It's like serving one another. And, 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 and that's good, don't get me wrong, but the majority of the serving other people is, is really happening after we leave this place. I love, I don't know if you caught that when Katina was singing, she was talking about as you, as we're driving down the highway, amen, how are we serving other people, amen. Oh, we serving them all right, all right, come on, someone. <laughs> we serving them all kind of hand gestures and serving them a whole lot of, a lot of attitude, right? <laughs> but as we go out into the world, how are we serving people that we come in contact with? The person that's in the, if you were like me in the Starbucks line this morning trying to figure out what did they order up there? Like, seriously. <laughs> like, yeah, we're going to get through this line, right? Uh, how, how, we, how as we intersect uh, people on our jobs, how are we serving them? Right? How are we serving that boss that gets on our absolute last nerve, right? That because they are simply just incompetent, one, but two, you know, how are we serving these people? And most of all, how are we even serving the people in our own homes, right? Our spouses, our, our children, uh, our, our parents, how are we serving people? Colossians 3.23, really, really Paul summarizes it for us. For he says that we are to work willingly at whatever we do as though we are working for the Lord rather than people, right? Everybody say whatever. whatever. Whatever we do, we treat every aspect of our lives from our relationships, our time, our money, our jobs, our responsibilities. We treat it all as an act of what? Service to God. Man, that really, that really changes and should change how we view the world around us, how we view people around us, how we view our interactions and our relationships and, and the things that we think about on a daily basis. Because here's the reality. We live in a world that always wants us to focus on what? Me. Me, myself, and I. Amen. Me, myself, and I. But friends, the reality is, is that Jesus came and he flipped the script. He said, no longer should you be focused on you. And, and not only did he flip it, but he showed us. He said, because I came not to be, if there was anybody that should have been served, right? But Jesus said, I didn't come to serve, to be served. I came what? To serve. To offer myself up as a sacrifice. When's the last time you told somebody, I'm just going to offer myself up as a sacrifice for you? Amen. Probably never said that, amen, right? <laughs> right? But we typically like we typically like telling the other person that well you need to make the sacrifice, right? Right? But we 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 are here to make a difference and we make a difference through serving. But friends, whatever we do and how we serve, we gotta have the right motive and the right attitude. Gotta have the right motive and the and and the right attitude. Here's the thing. I don't know about you, but I I don't want you doing nothing for me if you don't want to do it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If you just go have an attitude about it, you know what? You can just keep that. Yeah. I would do that myself. Amen. Amen. Right? Right? And, 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 so, and so it's not, just, it's not just an act that we do, right? But we got to have the right motive and the right atti attitude with it. So what is, what is the motive? Well, the motive is love. That's why Jesus says when he was approached and, uh, and he was asked what's the greatest of all the commandments, and he said to love God with all and equally to that love your neighbor as yourself. Love is the motive, right? Love was the motive behind God creating the world. 
and creating humankind. Love was the motive behind Jesus coming and dying on the cross for our sins. And, and Jesus said, this is how they will know that you are my disciples in how you what? Love one another. The motive has to be built around love. We focus too much on whether or not we like people. I don't like them, PV. I don't, I don't, I just don't like. I don't like them. I, I I don't necessarily think that Jesus liked the Pharisees. Amen. I always coming and asking him crazy questions at the wrong time. I always trying to. I don't necessarily think that he he did not he he did not like them, but he loved them. See, see, here's we have to start. We have to begin to learn how to distinguish between not liking what people do and liking people. Because that's the fallacy sometimes that us as believers can fall into is that we see the actions of people and we make the judgment decision of, of ourselves that not only do I not have to like them, but they're exempt from me loving them. And I hate to tell you that, that nowhere in the Bible. Do I read or have I read that anyone is exempt from being loved? That, 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 that their actions say, oh, no, you can't love them no more. Because if that was true, then guess what? Jesus would have never died on the cross. Right? He would have never, never exhibited the greatest act of love because he would have simply said, well, look how they act. Right? They don't deserve it. No one is exempt. So motive is love, but our attitude has to be one of gladness, of joy, right? I love what Psalms 102 says. It says what? Serve the Lord with gladness. In other words, be happy about it. Isn't it the worst thing to come in? I'm just saying, if you, I know that never happened. That, that didn't happen here at Cross Church. This is not happening here at Cross Church. But what? Wouldn't it be a sad thing to walk into the church and, and you get greeted at the door by, by a greeter that has just a bad attitude? Wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Or, or, or maybe the greeter had a good attitude, but by the time you got to the hospitality to get your coffee, you know, they, you were trying to ask, if, do we have any more sugar? And they just kind of grunting at you like, uh, pointing over there, you know. Or maybe, maybe they were good, and maybe you, you came through the, the, the doors to the sanctuary, and the, and the usher um, doesn't even speak to you. They just point, right? <laughs> All right. All right. But the reality is, is that, 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 that we, we exhibit those types of attitudes in a lot of ways every day of our lives. So if we, if, if we don't think that it's something that we should do here, why do we think it's something we should do at work or in our, or in our, in our home? Shouldn't we, shouldn't we serve with gladness, with the joy of God in our heart? Because God has given us an opportunity to serve. Here's, and I say this, sometimes we feel like that we're doing God a favor by serving. Oh, you know, PV need me. I guess I got to get out of here. Just let me get up here and oh, do my thing. PV need me today. Y'all laughing because some of y'all done said that. Amen. <laughs> I know, I know. We, we act like we're doing God a favor by serving. When the reality is God has given us the opportunity to participate in his kingdom work here on earth. When you think about that, that the creator of the universe chose you and I. He didn't need us. But he chose us to participate in, in the greatest plan that has ever been developed in the history of mankind, and that is the plan of salvation. And to participate in the redemptive plan of showing people how they can, they can leave a life 
of death and enter into a life of eternal glory. He's given us this opportunity to participate. And so we are here, not simply just to, to make a living, we're here to make a difference. Here's the second thing I want you to see, is that we are served in serving. That we are served in serving. Mark chapter 6, verse 40, um, it talks about, it's a story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. The scripture says here that, so they sat down in groups of 50 or 100, and Jesus took the five loaves of bread, two fish, and he looked towards heaven, and the scripture says he blessed it, and then breaking the loaves into pieces, he kept giving the bread to the disciples so that they could continue distributing it to the people. And then he also divided the fish for everyone to share. Verse 42 says, they all ate as much as they wanted. Now, that's important. They all ate as much as they wanted. But look at this. It says, and afterwards, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftover bread and fish. Friends, here's what I want to see about this story. This story starts off. The disciples come to Jesus and says, Jesus, all these people out here that have been listening to you teach, 5,000, not including women and children, they're hungry. Jesus said, okay, great, what you going to do about it? Now, that's, doesn't that sound like a typical prayer between us and God? God, here's my problem, fix it. God is, responds in turn, well, what are you going to do? And in 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 our typical approach is, God, just do something. And then we think, oh, I don't have to do anything. God's going God's to do it all, right? But he says to the disciples, he said, well, what are you going to do? The disciples look at him and say, well, we don't know. We, get, we got nobody here that brought food. Um, no, there was nobody strategic. He said, but there's this one little boy with five loaves, and, uh, five loaves of bread, two fish. Jesus said, great, bring it to me. Now, for them, they thought that was insignificant. And a lot of times we think what God has given us is insignificant to get the job done. We think that what we possess, what we have, our abilities, our talents are insignificant. But God is saying, just bring it to me. And he takes it. The Bible says breaks it. But guess what? He didn't, he didn't let the disciples off the hook. He gave it to them and he said, now, now you serve the people. Now, because of the disciples' willingness to bring the boy, because of the disciples' willingness to serve the people, the Bible says that after they had continued to serve and continued to distribute and everybody had eaten, the Bible says that at the end, now nowhere in this story does it say that the disciples ate anything. I want you to catch that part. It said that what? They served the food. Many times we want to be served first. Before we're willing to serve somebody else. The Bible says they, could, they, they served first. They kept serving, and they kept serving, and they kept serving. And after everybody had eaten, the Bible says that then there was 12 baskets of food left over. Now, how many disciples were there? 12, right? 12 baskets. That would imply that there was what? Overflow. That there was abundance. They were serving plates, but they walked away with a basket. <laughs> Some of the old school people gonna know that you know old school church fish fry. They're, they're, they were serving. They were serving an old school fish fry plate, right? And they walked away with baskets. Friend, what I'm trying to get you to see is, is when we turn off the mindset of I've got to be served before I can serve. And we begin to think, is my responsibility to just serve? And then when I serve, Jesus will serve me. You see what I'm saying? When we serve others, he will make provision for us. Friends, we typically don't want to give anything away. You know, it's always interesting when you do a clothes drive or something like that. We say we're going to do something for the homeless. Why do we, why do we always go give the stuff we don't want? <laughs> you never thought about that, right? 
We, we see it as an opportunity to clear out our closet. Nobody ever goes pull out their best outfit and say, I'm going to give this away right here. <laughs> this is the one, that, this is the one that, that, I caught, that I caught my wife and girlfriend with. I, I, no, no, this is my best suit, right? No, we typically don't give our best, right? We come and we give our leftovers. We typically don't like giving anything away, but here's what I want us to understand. No matter what you give away, whether it's time, talent, resources, Jesus will always restore it back to you. He will always restore it back to you. And friends, he will always meet the need. Third thing, I'm running out of time. We're just talking about serving. Here to make a difference. We're serving and serving. And the last thing is this, that when we serve, we will receive a reward. When we serve, we will receive a heavenly reward. And as a kid, I don't know about you, I used to love getting those gold star stickers. Anybody, is that too old for some of us? Amen. Amen. You used to get that little board and the, and the gold star symbol. Whenever you do something good or you did what the teacher asked you, you would get a gold star. Now, I used to love getting those because I didn't get very many. Amen. <laughs> I'm just saying. I was that kid. Amen. All right. I was, I was like negative stars. Amen. I, I, right. I used to love getting it. It was something about getting that star, that acknowledgement, that recognition that you had done a good job. Amen. Oh, we still love it. We still love it today. It's just, it's just those stars are just called performance reviews, and 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 we we love them today. They're called raises and 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 bonuses, right? They're li- right. We we love those. Uh, they you know they're, they're called at, at, at certain times when you reach milestones, you get that little booklet or email, and they say you can pick out some stuff. Amen. We 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 love that. We love getting recognition and acknowledgement, right? And friends, as children of God, it's no different. It is no different. We don't don't serve to receive a a tangible reward. That's not our purpose. But we serve knowing that we will be rewarded. In other words, no matter what I give up, Jesus is going to reward him. He's going to make it up in in my life. Friends, this is what we learn uh, when, when we read Matthew 25, verse 19 to 27, the end of this story, because we didn't finish this story, but we're going to finish it today. Remember, three servants, master gave one, five, one, two bags of, of silver, and then the last one, one, right? And he gave it according to their ability to handle them, right? Many of us that got that one, we mad because we looking at the one with the five, and we trying to figure out why we didn't get as much, right? But the scripture says, look, Then the master went away. In verse 19, after a long time, the master returned from his trip and called them to give an account of how they used his money. Then it said the servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver came forward with five more bags and said, Master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest, and I have earned five more. Look what the master says. The master was full of praise and said, what? Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. And then again, it it said the same thing for the one that gave the two. He brought two more back, and the master said, well done. And then for that one, there's a reason why he got one, and we find that out at the end of the story. Because he took the one... And he did nothing with it. And when he came back to the master, he brought it back to the master. And he said, well, I would have did something. Don't you hate that? I, well, I would have done something with it. But I know that you were a man that didn't like losing his money in essence. So I took it and I just hid it. And in essence, when he brought it back, he brought back what was given to him. But yet he didn't do anything with it. And the master said to him, you wicked servant, you knew that I, in essence, gave it it to you to use, to, to, to put it to use. He wasn't worried about the return. He was worried about whether or not they would use it. 
And so we see here that most of our lives are spent struggling and striving for tangible rewards here on earth. That everything we do sometimes is attached to, well, what am I going to get out of it? Oh, is that just me? Okay. Right? Well, I've, oh, I've, I, I, I've been there where you ask, well, what, well, what am I going to get out of this? Well, well when's, when's, when am I going to get the pay raise? When am I going to get that? I don't, I'm not taking on more work for, I'm not going to take on your job, and, right? And my job for nothing, right? And we, we, we're always looking for tangible benefits. But friends, when it comes to the kingdom of God, serving others is not about status, success, credentials, money, or possession. It is about the kingdom of God. And I love what Jesus says in Mark 9, 33 through 35. Because his disciples were arguing about, well, who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom? They were already trying to pick out seats, right? Well, I'm going to sit next to Jesus, and, and I'm going to be on his right. You're going to be on his left. No, you, you're going to be at the end of the table because you don't do anything, right? Right? Uh, and, they, and Jesus was overhearing this conversation, and he kind of let them get it out. And then he finally, once they got to their, their destination and after they had done what they had come there to, to do, Jesus asked them this. He said, what were you discussing on the road? But they did not answer because they had argued about which of them was going to be. They already knew it was not the right conversation to have. And Jesus, Jesus said to them, he sat them down, verse 35, and he said, he called the 12 disciples over and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must take last place and be the servant of everyone else. In a world where we taught to be number one, number two is not good enough. If you're not number one, don't matter. If you're not the best, it doesn't matter. If you're not always striving to be the top of the top of the list, the top salesperson, the top athlete, the top, if you you got to be number one. And in a world that that focuses on that, Jesus says, no, no, no. In the kingdom of heaven, it's actually reversed. It's the one who's willing to be last. It's the one who's willing. It's the one who's willing to let everybody else go first. And as, as he lets everybody else go first, he, he, he says to them, how can I, how can I help you? It's the, one, the one that says, I don't, I don't have to be the, at the top of the ladder. I, I, you know what? I'm okay with allowing somebody else to, to, to be somebody else's step stool so that they can advance to the next level. Oh, we don't like that part. Don't step on me. Don't step on me to get, to get the promotion I wanted. Amen. He says, but in the kingdom... Those who will take last place and be willing to become a servant to all. He says in the kingdom, those are the ones who will be first. Friends, don't just strive for the reward here on earth. Oh, I know prosperity preaching done got us. Amen. Amen. Tell them that we can have it all down here, amen. But, but guess what? If we have it all down here, then what are we going to look forward when we get to, to heaven? No, no, it's not about having it all down here. And what you have getting, and don't get me wrong, Jesus wants us to have a blessed life. But if we're going to be blessed, then guess what? That, that comes with more accountability and more responsibility to be a blessing. All right, Ben can come. I want to call, close with this. This statement, and it is, it is time for us to get engaged and involved in the work of God. And only, only, only you can, can really answer what that looks like for you. But, but it, in, in any sports team, you have the players that are on the field or on the court. Then you have those that are on the sideline and on the bench. Now, you know, I've always said if, 
I wouldn't mind being an NBA player and I can be like the 15th man on the bench because he makes about $10 million just being there. I'd be the best cheerleader you can be coming off that side. Like, man, you got it, man. You can get it. Come on, we're going to win this game. We're going to motivate. And I get my towel and go sit right at the end of the bench. Right? Amen. Amen. All right? But in the kingdom of God, there is no place. There is no bench. But yet many of us have kind of created one. We kind of brought our own lawn chair, you know, put it over on the side. God's called all of us to get into the game. He didn't give us talents and abilities. He didn't give us what we have to sit on the sideline and not do anything with them. Everybody's, everybody's got a role to play. Everybody's got an assignment. Everybody's got a part to play in, in this game called life. So, friends, the call for us is, is to look at our lives and our abilities and our talents and what we've been blessed with and say, how can I get engaged? Well, I'm glad you asked because I have two ways to help you to figure that out. Two ways. We're, we're going we're gonna to do... Uh, and we're going to launch today something called the Engage Survey. Amen? Now, this survey, you can find it in your app, um, in the Cross Church app. And so if you don't have it, um, download Cross Church uh, Texas and find us in the app, App Store. And when you get in the app, you'll see at the very top, and you can pull your phone out, it's right there at the very top, Engage Survey. And you click on that, it's going to take you to this page, and then just click on that, Take the Survey. This survey is basically just a survey to help you and us get to learn more about how God has designed you. What do, what do you do? What, what do you like to do? What are your, what are your hobbies? What are, your, what are the things that you like to participate in? What are your spiritual gifts? And if you don't know them, there's a, there's a link at the very top that allows you to click on it to take a quick little quiz so that you can discover your spiritual gifts. Now, this is important because I don't want nobody to come at PB. I don't know my spiritual gifts. I'm like, well, I just gave you the link to the, amen, click that link, amen, and find out for yourself how God has gifted you to do his work for the kingdom. Now, that's part one. Part two is this. Now, some of you are going to be like, well, I know what my spiritual gifts are, and I know how I'm wired, but I don't know how to, how to take that and get involved. Because typically most people feel like that. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'm a writer. How, how, can, how can God use that? Because um, typically when we say, well, I don't preach, we, get, we, we strike that one off the list, right? Uh, I don't sing. I like to sing, but y'all not going to like me singing. Amen. So strike that one off the list, right? We, we, we typically start at the high. And so we start to whittle down and we're like, I don't know what it is that I, 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 I've been called to do or, or how does my gifts and my talents fit? Well, on the 17th of September, two weeks from now, we're going to have a, a class called the Engage class. And that class is going to be an opportunity for you to come and to learn about spiritual gifting, to talk about your spiritual gifting, to talk about how uh, and what are some ways that you can begin to make them come into reality and, and how you can use them to serve others in the church and outside of the church. Um, how, you can, how, you can, how you can get engaged and, and understand, hey, God's wired you specifically for a certain purpose and a certain thing. God put you here to make a difference. Now, these two things, now, the, now this engaged class is something that we're going to do moving forward every third Sunday. But it is open this first month to everybody. So, so I want you to take the survey first, right? And then, and then you'll hear more about the Engage class and, and how to sign up for that. Can we do that this morning? Amen. Okay, that was like five people. Amen. All right. I know how many surveys I'm getting back. All right. <laughs> because here's the thing. It's time for us to get off of the bench. There's no point in us continuing to complain about what's happening in our world and our society. Looking at the news and looking at devastation and heartbreak and things that are happening around the world and even in our community and saying, man, I wish somebody would, would do something about that. I, I, wish, I wish somebody would, 
will, will stop that when maybe you are that somebody. We just, we just got through singing. I'm no longer a slave. But when it comes to saying, how can I actively get involved? And well, we get scared. I'm like, oh, I don't know. God, those, those excuses kick in. Well, I don't really have a lot of time. I, I'm, I'm really not good at anything. That's not true. I don't have anything to offer the brain. To, that's not true. That's not true. God created us all with purpose, and he has a plan for all of our lives. And you are not here by accident, by happenstance. You are here because you are part of the purpose and plan of God in this world. So I'm going to start. Y'all going to fill out these surveys, and y'all going to know PV Senior Survey because I'm going to be like, so... I heard you, uh, no more hiding, no more hiding, no more. It's time for us to get engaged, not only here in the house, but in the world. So let's pray. Father, we thank you now for this time. We thank you, God, for your word. We thank you for all the gifts and abilities that you have blessed those that are in this house and those that are watching online. God, I pray that if we are not fully engaged in them and have not fully engaged them in your service, I pray now, God, that, that we will step out of the shadows of fear and that we will begin to, to move into the light of the possibilities of what can be done through us. Father, I pray that you will release those gifts now I pray that you would release those talents. In the, I pray, God, that you, would, that you would release them in this place. Because, Father, we recognize that somebody needs the very gifts that we all have. That there is something within us that, that, that somebody needs, not only in this place, but in the world. And, and, and until we uh, begin to let it loose and let that light shine through us, God, that, God, they're simply waiting. And so, Father, we offer ourselves up today as sacrifice to you. And we pray that you would receive it now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Give God praise for that. As we move into this time of decision, you can stand to your feet. Our prayer team will come. Our praise team is going to sing. This is your opportunity to, to take whatever step of faith you're willing and, and God has called you to take. Um, if you're here today and you're ready to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, make that commitment to him. We want to receive that. Maybe you need prayer for whatever's going on in your life. We would love to pray with you. Um, but maybe you're saying you just want to say and make a verbal commitment because sometimes we just need to say it out loud that, that I'm here and I'm ready to get involved. I'm ready to get engaged. I'm ready to serve in whatever capacity God wants to use me. We would love to be the ones to receive you this morning. So as we praise, people will move. But let's pray for those that do come. Pray that God may stir your heart if it is his will for you to come as well. Amen.